<laughs> wow, that was hard. <laughs> yeah. You guys there? Anybody out there? Okay, so we are here. This is like really weird. We're gonna wait for a few more people to get on. There's some, is that you? Where? I say it's one, two. Looks like people are joining now. Can y'all see this? Cause we worried. We were like looking at the camera like, did this work? Somebody type a message for us, please. <laughs> Somebody type a message for us. Oh, sorry. There we go. Hey, Shawnee. <laughs> this is so weird, y'all. Right, right. So weird. Is that music loud? Hey, we got a microphone. Who is that? Man. <laughs> What's up? Avon from California. Wow, man. What's up? What's up? You're so much better than me. Jason, how you doing, man? Tree to us! <laughs> it, hey, that's right. Get your wine because, you know, this. Hey, we ain't going to be out here live and not enjoy a little bit. I mean, it's going to be like a family conversation. <laughs> for us. It's the only way we can do it. Okay. Ken said the suspense is killing him. <laughs> yeah, me too. The suspense was killing me. Yeah, we were we were sitting here trying to figure out how to start it. Yeah, because I was clueless. Right. You know black people, sometimes we, we were trying really not to be late. And we were trying not to be late. And but it's our first time doing it. So when we was doing this thing, it was like it was not coming off right. And Dakota didn't believe that I didn't know what I was doing. He was like, We're fine, we're fine. But no, we really weren't. We were. That's why we were late. We thought we was gonna have to cancel the whole thing, y'all, for real. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll probably give it like maybe five minutes. Um, let everybody get it together. You know, we ain't gonna go too long, but um, we really feel good that you guys have been able to join us. Um, especially take part in this journey this far. Absolutely. You know, when we started this thing, it was so unintentional. Um, but the love that everybody's been showing us um, is really nice. <laughs> and it's very encouraging for us to keep pushing, chasing our dreams. So. Exactly. So in the meantime, while we're waiting, you know, for a few more people to join, if you guys have questions that you want to ask us tonight, go ahead and type them in. Um, so we can try to see him <laughs> and not get caught up in the moment so we can answer some of you guys' questions. I know. This is so weird. Oh, Overland East. Damn, Art Vandalay from Arizona. Yeah, we got some people. Come. And we know that some of y'all on the other side of the coast and that 7 o'clock our time is off early, so you're probably getting off. Having to fight traffic and stuff like that, and we show enough appreciate y'all. Can you read that question? What motivates? Oh, most people that it's a glam. That's a good question. That's a good question. So the question <laughs> before we got the first question: <laughs> What motivated us to glam? Maybe we should bring the computers a little closer so we can see better. What you think? I might have to just get my glasses. Oh, what? About, I'm gonna have my glasses on. Mm. We might, we might need to move it a little closer. <laughs> that's, blue. that's a little bit better. Yeah. Can I see? All right. Ooh, are we going to Overland Expo East? That's a good question, too. Yeah. Okay. Tremaine is on. Kashana's on. Corey Webb. Hey, 
Corey. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us tonight. You want to get started? Yeah. I feel bad making this play. Yeah, yeah, we wait. Are. I know, I know. But if by now, play. everybody should at least have their wine. What's yours? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nicole is so, so serious about the drink, y'all. You got to have a little bit of wine, man. That's the only way you can like chill out in the afternoon, right? Yes. So, first question. We'll start with questions and do the announcement later. I know. Yeah. Make y'all suspense. suspense. The first question was, what motivated us to glam? You want to answer this? Yeah, that's easy. I, short answer, I motivated Dakota. Right. Well, she motivated me. Yeah. <laughs> Her and Queen Glam were like really big in the campus for like years. And if y'all don't know, Queen Glam is um, Glam Queen is my best friend, that's Teresa. Right. Glam Queen. Yeah. yeah. Teresa. So, um, the, the thing, <laughs> Sonya and them have been glamping or camping for years and trying to get me to go. And I was saying, and you'll read about that a little bit later, but, um, I was like, if we're going to go out here, I mean, I got to be able to have the same experience that I would if we were at home, if we were going to do the things that we do in Atlanta. So it was like, ain't but one way to do it, y'all. You got to set it out. I mean, good food, good wine. She know how I get down. So it was like, we can do it, put it in a cooler. Uh, those two are geniuses when it comes to uh, different things and creativity for being able to give a really good experience. Those two being the answer, Yeah. Oh, okay. I just yeah. had to clarify. Yeah. So that's what got us into glamping. Nakota didn't want to go. Nakota was one of those dudes that couldn't go outside. And I was like, dude, you have to go. Well, I won't say couldn't go outside. He didn't want to go camping. Yeah, I was. that was an exaggeration. He didn't want to go camping. And I was like, let's go. Please, let's go. Try something different. And he said yes. Yes. Yeah. He said yes. And our first camping trip was in Wamala, South Carolina. And on the way home, he was like, okay, I want to do this again. Yeah, I was And home. he bought a tent. Yeah. When we was driving back, I was like on uh, Craigslist, which is a great place. And talking to, to get, Teresa. Right. And talking to <laughs> Teresa. But Craigslist is a great place to pick up a lot of gear for cheap. Um, and I was like, I got to find my own tent. She was using a big Agnes. Um, I don't forget. I forget which one it was. But it was a really nice tent. And that was also one of the first things I learned was um, you got to have a good tent. And y'all saw those videos where it goes bad and a, a cheap tent just didn't work out. So I was like, if we're going to do it, let me get one that can withstand some wear. So I found the REI tent, uh, the Kingdom 6, for like 400 bucks. Yeah, and it had all the accessories, which was, yeah. yeah. So that's how we got into it. Um, and Sonya didn't think that I was as serious as I was. Um, so it took a few months to get her to like, feel like I was like, that I wasn't wasting money. <laughs> Cause I was trying to buy everything. So Camille just asked a really good question. What wine are we drinking? I don't know. This is a rosé that I picked up from the local store, and in a minute, because we only had half a mm -hmm. bottle. Same rosé. No, this that, this is a rosé. We haven't poured any of this shit. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. We so had to this finish is the second one before we open. Right, bottle. right. You got to finish the first bottle first, right? And then we're gonna jump on a Sauvignon Blanc, um, and it's out of New Zealand. So yeah, it's called uh, 13 degrees Celsius. So we'll find out how it is, and we'll let you know how it tastes. Yeah. All right. So is, uh, someone just asked a question, Sean22, is anyone else's screen funky? You guys are um, seeing us pretty clear? And I went on and turned off the music. I didn't know if that was bothering anybody out there. Is that better as far as the sound is concerned, y'all? And there you go. Aaron Fair, Fairchild said, log off and then back on and you should be okay. Thanks, Jason. Okay. So um, that's essentially how we originally got into the whole glamping experience. And um, it's been a, uh, y'all have seen almost all of our camping experiences, except for maybe what, like one or two, I believe. Um, this is 
is why I love my best friend. She sent us a picture of what the funky screen looks like. I don't know. <laughs> right. We're seeing the screen. It looks okay. But somebody suggested if your screen is looking crazy to log off and then log back on and go from there kind of thing. Yeah. Is that working for you guys now? So Cynthia Bryant, uh, what's up? She's asking where our next trip is going. Hey, cousin Cynthia. Hey, daddy. <laughs> oh, is that cousin? Yeah, that's what's up, Cynthia. Is. Um, we're going to go to Overland East, which is in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, what is it? November 9th? Mm -hmm. November 9th. 9th through 11th. Hendersonville, so right outside of Asheville. Yeah. And someone else asked that question when we first started. Are we going to Overland East? So right. that's the answer to the question. Right. Um, and the next adventure. Right. So, so we're going to be trying out a few different things once we get up there. But on Saturday, we're going to be out in the um, Overland East Park. Uh, we're going to try to talk to some everybody that we can run into, um, a few vendors. Uh, we also wanted to check out uh, something new to us, which is called Hip Camp. And it's only like an Airbnb for camping uh, where people who own land um, put their land out there for you to check out. So we wanted to see what that experience was going to be before we shared it with everybody else and invited people out to it. So yeah, we got so a small... we're going to a farm with horses. Right, right. We're no gonna... chickens and goats, though. It's right. kind of disappointing. Um, someone just asked something really good. Someone said that the screen is... Uh, hey, B, I think it's my Uncle B. Uh, they said to log off and then log back in, and you should be able to get the screen straight. I see you, Ron. Ron gonna be there with his Try to call camp. <laughs> I forgot. Somebody asked a good oh. Uncle B, would you ever go camping in Africa with the lions? We do want to go camping in Africa. With the lions, that part I don't necessarily want to do. So not um, even in a rooftop tent. I don't even know how you would camp in Africa with lions, but people do it. Maybe in a van. You can um you can rent RVs. Right, but they got like legit camping or yeah. They got expeditions. Nicola can do that. Right. Nicola can do that. The easy answer be yeah. Uh, just so so we one of the things that we've never really shared with y'all is what it is, uh, what our dreams and goals and aspirations are, and what we've been doing this far. So when we first got Frank, you know, it was a really a camping truck. Um, it was the third vehicle. We were having to park it in. A, we had to rent a parking spot across the um, across the way so that we could have somewhere to put it because we only have two parking spots in our condo. And it ended up being um, a little bit more as we started talking about the whole experience of camping and what it means. Uh, we started talking about what else could we do, and so. I wanted to do a cross country, cross country trip. It has always been on my bucket list. I love driving and it just seemed like the right thing to do to see the whole country. So we decided that um, we would start trying to work on turning Frank into something that could go across the country. And so our first trip where we were practicing was Portsmouth Island. And y'all saw that video. That was hard. That was hard. That was hard. Like, oh my God, beach camping is terrific. Exactly. Someone just asked, how frequently do we can't go camping or glamping, as we like to call it? We try to go like once every other month. Recently, we've been so busy and we haven't really had the opportunity. Um, but that's the goal is every like six to eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, advice for first timers. Do you have any advice for first timers? <sighs> the. Buy all, buy as much gear. If you're a first time camper, uh, try to buy as much gear as you can off of Craigslist uh, and go to places that, like state parks where it's a little bit easier and more forgiving. Um, they normally would have a lot of amenities like a shower, uh, um, uh, what else? fire pits, picnic tables. Some of them even have power. So if you're looking to sort of ease your way into it, 
Uh, that's the best way. And they normally also have like a ranger or somebody nearby. So if things ain't going quite right, you can reach out to them uh, to get some assistance. So that would be um, my first advice for anybody jumping out there. Yeah. And mine would be do whatever it takes to make you comfortable. Because like I have, I'm sure y'all know, I have a hard line against pooping in the woods. And I just need to, I'm serious. I need to do something that makes it comfortable for me. I and I don't want to eat canned food or freeze shot food. So we bring good food. Um, yeah. Scott, filling up Nakota's glass too. Thank you. You saw it was a little empty, right? Yeah. Um, oh, who is that? Stacy Nash, do we work? Absolutely. <laughs> Every day <laughs> from eight to five. <laughs> We're both engineers. Um, I work in facilities management and Dakota works for um, the government. Yeah. But we go to work every single day but we are trying to build this grow this business and transition um and one day maybe we'll make it yeah and it's, i guess the easy answer to that is we are strategic in how we take time off and manage it so if it's like a holiday or something like that we'll take uh, maybe a day on either end of that holiday so um if it's a monday holiday we might take friday off and we'll leave thursday night get there set up kind of thing and then be able to have the whole experience. So that way we can get as much time, but also not use up all of the vacation. So that's normally how it works. And then there are a lot of shorter trips um, where we can leave on a Friday night and be back on Sunday afternoon. So that's normally how we try to do the trips. Good question. Yeah. Good, good answer. <laughs> um, Camden Dad says, do you think we'll move to camping with the trailer? And we talk about this all the time, but honestly, we live in a condo and we have nowhere to put a trailer. If I had somewhere to put a trailer, I would probably be willing to get one just because it's a little more flexible. Um, we can keep it packed and we wouldn't have to go through the drama of packing up Frank all the time. But yeah, maybe one day if I have a farm with chicken and goats like I want. Yeah. Um, and Scott, go ahead and get that glass filled and fill it all the way up. But um, as far as the trailer is concerned, I love them. Uh, but the problem that Sonya's, is, I mean, we just don't have a way around not having a place to park it. So uh, that's going to be the biggest limiter. And one of the things that we've been trying to do uh, is to reduce the amount of gear that we're taking so that we can utilize the space that we have in the most efficient way. So this doesn't mean that we're going towards camping. No. That ain't going to happen. It just means that we've had to get smarter about the type of gear that we're taking. Like um, one of the bigger things we had that was eating up a lot of space in the truck was our sleeping bag. We had this Teton Mammoth. And Which it was Teresa big. told me last time I needed to replace. Right. So we recently replaced it with a very small, a small queen size sleeping bag by <laughs> Teton. And we're going to try that. And y'all will see a video on that. We're going to do a comparison between the two. Um, so in all of that stuff keeps us from having to uh, go beyond the inside of the truck as far as space volume. Yeah. Sonya likes the wine. I got to check it out. It's good. It's really good. Um, do we have kids and do we have, do they camp with us? We have grown children. Right. Um, we have two daughters, Charmaine and Jasmine, that are grown. And Jasmine has camped with us. That's the uh, video um baby cobra baby <laughs> jasmine thought this little bitty what was it a um it was a salamander a salamander she was like oh it's a baby cobra it's a baby cobra daddy it's a baby cobra <laughs> hilarious <laughs> but from time to time i've taken my niece and nephew camping they loved it chloe was two and she still talks about making the fire and our friends that we go camping with um Periodically, they'll bring their kids. Somebody asked, I can't remember who it was. One of the questions we just was asked was, what was the most spiritual spiritual experience we've had? And easily Grand Canyon. All, all day. Yeah, tip point. All uh, day. Y'all saw when I came back from there, that was, that was real. That was, I have never been 
never had an experience that way or an experience like that. I'm a fairly brave man. And to say that I got to the edge and was so shook about going over that I got down on my hands and like scooted to the end just so I didn't go over was something. But once I got into position and was able to just sit there, um, I think I was down for about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, the tranquility and the uh, peacefulness was existential. So it was yeah. a terrific, uh, beautiful experience. Thanks for asking that question. Yeah, and I wasn't at the edge, but I still had a very similar experience. It's like as far out as you could see were canyons and rocks and ridges and it really helped you to understand how small you really are. Yeah. And not to say, you know, that we're insignificant because I think that everyone has a really huge role that they play. But in the grand scheme of things, life is so much bigger than wow. the things that we concern ourselves with from day to day. Yeah. You know, the world is not going to end if my glass ain't full. What? You know, so <laughs> just... <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but yeah, it just makes you understand Scott. how um, how um, how big the world yeah. is yeah. and, and, how, and how much possibility that there is. Yeah. 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 Um, so just real quick, if anybody's having screen troubles, um, the advice has been to log off and then log back on. So just want to let that be known. But uh, it still works. Right. Okay. Camille asked, um, what's been your longest trip? And that's been out west. Out west. Was it twelve days? Yeah, that was Overland West, uh, and that was a harrowing experience to say the least. Uh, and we learned a lot about each other, uh, about Frank, uh, and just what it meant to do a long cross country trip. And going back to the story that Sonya interrupted earlier. Um, <laughs> The goals were to do a cross country trip. Uh, we did that. Uh, the next one is we want to take one year and drive across uh, from Baja down through Mexico and then through Central America, ship the truck over to Pan, I mean, cross the Panama Canal, pick it back up, do the rest of Central America down through South America and Palpatine and Patagonia. We want to do that over a year. Bring the truck back retool it, have it worked on, and then get ready to ship it over to Africa and do a three-year expedition. And we want to show you all all of those um, experiences as it's happening in real time. And that's sort of what this whole experience is starting to culminate towards. Yeah. So big dreams, y'all. Big dreams. And speaking of all these trucks, someone asked a question earlier. Um, if Frank starts acting up, would we get rid of them? Absolutely not. You're not getting your hands on my truck. Absolutely not. You're going to have to pry the keys from my cold, dead hands. So, if, I mean, if you saw any of our videos from out west, we had so many issues with that truck, truck, truck from alternator going bad to overheating to losing oil, um, radiated fluid. You know, we had a lot of issues with it, but we got to fix it, keep moving. Um, kept moving. Yeah. That's like a 400,000 mile truck. We have what, like 250 on it. Yeah. So we still got a ways to go and then we'll rebuild the engine. Yeah. So as y'all can see, Frank is like, uh, he's like one of our he's kids. Like family, man. He's he's kids. Yeah. Frank is a trooper, says Ron. Okay, so we got a really good question um, about uh, the type of clothes that we take when we go and how do we pack. <laughs> and it, it's, it's a lot like wherever you go, if you're going on vacation or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, we try to make sure that we check the weather. You gotta check the weather um, and then pack accordingly. You know, we try to pack minimally um, because all of that stuff is extra space that has to be accounted for. So we bought these, uh, excuse me, we bought black hole Patagonia bags, Patagonia black hole bags, <laughs> and they are very, flexible as far as how much stuff you can chunk into one. Um, and we'll take probably for a weekend trip, um, enough underwear to cover the whole weekend and then a pair of ex officio underwear. And then so, the rest. <laughs> I take comfy clothes. I pretty much dress like I am now. Jeans, t-shirts, sweatpants. 
Um, nothing serious. A good pair of boots in the summertime, my Birkenstocks must have. The hardest thing is dealing with this natural hair of mine. Um, are y'all ready for this announcement? Wait a minute, wait a minute. We got one more good question. We got a lot then, of good questions. I know. B is asking one that's saying, during the downtime on camping, what are some of the things that we do to pass the time or prepare for things that might happen later in the trip? We pack everything. We overpack. <laughs> Every time. But in the downtime, it's hammock lifetime, y'all. Yeah. And I mean, we hammocks are everything uh, during the day when you get a chance to just sort of chill. Um, that's going to be the thing. Go get your beer. Go get in the hammock. Make sure the music stays charged. I mean, the batteries stay charged and chill and get ready for campfire. That's the ultimate TV. It's the end all be all. And it's the way we love to end every afternoon. Um, so that's really the only activity of the day is to make sure we got wood for the campfire at night. Go fetch some wood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what you got? I don't know. Are we ready for the announcement? I don't know. As far um, there's one more good question here um, about first aid training. The answer is yes. Um, when I was in the Air Force some years ago, I was one of the trainers for first aid and buddy care. So I brought a lot of that experience with me. Uh, and uh, I still, I haven't taken any recent courses and I know first aid has changed quite a bit. So I uh, plan to do a lot of that before we really start getting engaged with um, bigger groups going out because somebody's got to know something. And y'all saw that Yeti bit me. Oh, the Yeti. dog. The Yeti bit me. So uh, you got to make sure that you are equipped for um, emergencies of any sort. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know I said it was time for the announcement, but a good question. Um, Mr. K, do we ever get tired of pulling out the camera? So... Despite all the videos that we have and all the footage, we miss a lot. <laughs> we miss a lot and don't pull out the camera because we get caught up in the moment and just really enjoying ourselves. Um, and when we go out with people, we're horrible about recording. We just forget, yeah. you know, um, hanging out with a tribe called Camp and pull together. We got back and was like, we were pissed because we kept forgetting to break out the camera uh, to record some really good conversations and some cool moments. So Yeah, and that's why a lot of times there are gaps in our stories because we just forget to pull out the camera. Yeah. Like, nobody knows whatever happened to that rooftop tent because we didn't record it. And since I'm talking about it, what happened was um, Frank was giving us a hard time. It was so much drag on top of the roof. And honestly, we did not like the rooftop tent. So what we decided to do is after we were done camping, our very first stop in Colorado was at an REI store. Thank God for REI's return policy. And we returned. That the thing immediately. Tent. We took it back immediately. Yeah. We left Moab and we drove straight to REI and was like, get this thing off the roof. Uh, I had a, Frank was struggling and we had a long road trip back and that thing was like an anchor driving down the road. Um, other things that I didn't too take care about with the rooftop tent was I had to set that thing up by myself every day. And I was having- Cause I'm too short. Right, so you're too short. <laughs> I'm no All you can do is just look. I I'm no just, help. Right. So- And Ron and Rashad was like, we set up. Right. <laughs> Ron and Rashad had a gazelle. <laughs> Uh, tent and they were just chilling. It was like we already set up, man. You want something to drink? So <laughs> they did try to help, but <laughs> it was really nothing right. they could do. Right. I was really trying to see how easy it was for me to do it by myself because I was really hoping that this was going to be a long term solution for us. But the real problem with it was um, not only was it hard to um, let out or um, open up and then close, it was also every time we wanted to go somewhere we would have to pack that thing up. So, yeah. you know, if we went two or three places, that's two or three times you got to open and close that thing. And that was just a pain in the butt. And that's something that a lot of people have asked us before, what we preferred, um, a pop-up tent versus a rooftop tent. I really think it depends on what you're doing. If you're going to be at a place for a few days and don't have to put up your tent every day, Rooftop tent, it's okay. But then, like, if you have to get up and go to the bathroom, and like, you have to climb down a ladder, and that's not really cool. Yeah. But for the convenience of packing up every day, I really did like the concept of 
yeah. a pop up tent. Yeah, and we do a lot of overpacking. We take a bunch of stuff we really don't need, and then but we might need it. But we might need it. And now you know we really are trying to be um, intentional about what the function of something is, and saying we're not going to take it. And we've been having a lot of hit and misses uh, where we've underpacked um, in instances, and then overpacked or packed all the wrong stuff. And so we're still trying to work through that. And what we're going to really create for other people. Uh, our subscribers and all is a fairly good list of things that are essential for you to take. And hopefully that'll be a bigger help to you all as you're plan preparing for your glamping experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think we have a True question. Is True Prepper is good. Yeah, those are boys. Yeah. Um, Expedition Georgia, one of right. our good friends that works at True Prep. Yeah, Dave. Um, and another good store is um, Going Gear. Yeah, say it. In Cobb County. Well, is it? Yeah. yeah, that's Cobb County, right on Concord Road if you're in the Atlanta area. But a good question to transition into our announcements because I've been trying. <laughs> Wait, I need some wine. We're 30 minutes in. Okay, to transition our, into our announcements, someone said we need a Tree Trooper t shirt. We agree. <laughs> We agree. So get your wine out, y'all. <laughs> Camille, we've been married for 15 years. We just celebrated 15 years, August 30th. Long 15, hard, 15, the hard way. <laughs> 15 the hard 15 way. 15 the hard way. 15 the hard way. But um, Tree Trooper t shirt. So tonight. Are you ready? You ready? Tonight, we are launching our Staples Intense website. That's right. www.staplesintense.com. You can go to it right now and see it. It is live. There you can get our very first, it doesn't say Tree Trooper, but it's our signature um, T-shirt. Right, they look just like this, except they're yellow with a blue, um, a navy blue yeah. logo. So... And the thing is, there's only a um, hundred of them. Only a hundred. And these are only going to be the only colorway that we're doing. This is the only time we're going to do it. And it's really to say um, we wanted to always know and recognize some of the first people that supported us when we first really got going. And that shirt ain't going to be, we're never going to do it again. So the people that have it, um, is y'all are special, yeah. Y'all are special, y'all are special. Us. So yeah. go online, they're $25 free shipping. Get your t shirt, t yeah. trooper t shirts. Um, Amen. on our website, on our website, you'll be able to find out a lot more information about us. Um, a lot of the comments that we receive is that you guys are a great couple, you know, you have a great relationship. It has not always been that way. It's not always been that way. And camping is one of the things that really helps to bring us together. But um, there's a blog section of our website that kind of goes in to um, have for a couple posts on there. It kind of goes into, you know, who we are as a couple, where we've been, so that you guys can see um, a little more insight into us as a couple. We try to be transparent even, you know, when we're on our videos, you know, Nakota talking about his underwear, his ex officio underwear, and me talking about pooping in the woods. We try to be as transparent as possible, but, yeah. you know, um, camping is near and dear to us. Because it really saved our marriage. Yeah, it really did save our marriage. You know, um, camping is one of the things that we can do, and we realize how well we work together. You know, Nakota's the adventurer. I'm the more practical one. I help keep him from falling off the ledge. He gets me closer to the ledge so I can be, you know, more um, explorative. And it just, it works for us. Yeah. You know, we're out in nature. We get to um, relax and unwind and not have to deal with day-to-day -day stresses. Do we have to wash dishes, wash clothes, whatever. It's just a really fun time for us. It's a fun time for her. The boy be working. Nah. <laughs> Look, it, it is a, it's a terrific time. But, you know, I think one of the things that was really big for what was taking place was this was a forced interaction. And if any of y'all ever gone camping or thinking about camping, let me explain that it's a lot of work. 
uh, is not a casual experience. You know, you have to get there, bring all of the gear, uh, all of the food. Everything has to be prepared, taken out to wherever you're going to be, um, and then set up. And every time you cook, you got to set up everything, cook, and break down everything after you eat. So it's a lot of work. And what it started doing was we wanted to help each other have the best experience while they were out there. And that meant that there was a degree of selflessness in every activity that we were doing. And we started bringing that selflessness back home to um, Atlanta. And it started to grow the marriage because it started to be these good experiences stacked on good experiences with this degree of selflessness um, growing. So that's another W. So that was the biggest thing that um, we took away from when we started camping um, and why it transitioned to be this kind of experience that you all are seeing. It wasn't easy and we'll, we want to help other people um, in whatever way we can, if there's some advice or something that you all would like to hear about or know about, um, you know, we'll, if we, can, if we can help, we will. Because we want people want to get outside um, and explore the world, really, but also to explore each other, um, to go out and make new friends. Uh, the places, the places we've been, the people that we've met, are nothing less. Of oh my gosh! The you true met American amazing experience. people. Yeah, it's the true American experience. Yeah. And um, you know, it's not a. A lot of black people have concerns about being out in the woods and, and whether or not there's going to be some um, races coming to get you. And we haven't had those experiences. And we've gone to some fairly rural um, areas in Tennessee, Georgia, uh, South Carolina, and it, it hasn't been that. We've been well received almost ev absolutely everywhere that we've been. <laughs> so we want to help people build bridges um, and that's really what that experience of, um, of Staples and Tents is about, is to shake hands with your neighbor, shake hands with your wife, um, kiss your wife, and try to be the best person that you can when you're out there. Exactly, because um, <laughs> who was it that said we need to spend more time focusing on what we have in common as opposed to our differences? I don't know. I don't know. It was somebody important i can't remember but that's oh, what barack obama exactly president obama. <laughs> president barack obama said it um spend time focusing on commonalities versus differences and that's the one thing that camping has also allowed us to do is everywhere we go out we have camping in common with the fellow campers and it's not about you know what you look like what you dress like you know what you like. It's about you like liking camping. Yeah. So yeah. open that up to us. So number two, if y'all can find the website, I posted it up there. It's live. So maybe there is um, an incorrect spelling, but <clears throat> it should be there. If you go to the store in our on our website, not only will you find Staples and Tents stickers, Staples and Tents t-shirts, but you will find tents, y'all. What? Tents. <laughs> so we have secured our first um, our first major um, partnership because yep. that's what this is. This is a partnership. Um, last year at Overland East, we met the guys from Gazelle Tents and fell in love with this tent. We saw somebody else else's tent. We was like, we have to have that, so we purchased it and love it. We are not partnership partnering them with them because we're making money. We're partnering them because we love that's the a tent. Good product. It's a great product. That's heavy as hell. Don't get me twisted. That's a hit. The T4 Plus is right. The T4 <laughs> Plus is a heavy tent. But, you know, it's a glamping tent. It's a little on the luxurious side as far as the spaciousness that it offers for us. But I think that particular one holds about eight people. But we like the ease of the use. Um, and a lot of the people that we've gone out with are, uh, have bought it, have bought one. So. Yeah. Tribe Called Camp has one. Yeah. Glam Queen has one. <laughs> right, right. 
guys at Overland Bound. So yeah, you know, Overland Bound, they have it. It's one of those where you can show up late in the rain at night and pop out mm-hmm. and have it set up in like a minute. And Literally. trust, trust. That's one of the biggest things that we want from that experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, my REI Kingdom Six. Oh my gosh, it's y'all, a quick one. Y'all saw the video. I think it was what about. That was one of our first videos. Yeah, yeah. It was like eight or nine minutes to which set that up. Which is good for and, a Yeah, which is really good, but uh, it's a lot of moving parts. And I think we've had a few times where it didn't quite go that well. But um, this tent being able to be set up in sixty seconds was a really big thing for us. But uh, we really like the spirit uh, that this uh, that Gazelle has, and we thought it was a good fit, and we wanted to be able to um, offer you the first uh, uh, tent that we think is a great Worthy. part of the glamping experience. And we're going to start recommending um, complete glamping setups for you, so it'll be like type of mattress, um, sleeping bags. Tense. We're going to give you guys a lot of insight into what our experience is, and we want you to send us your recommendations mm-hmm. uh, so that we can become better glampers while we are there, too. So he can give him something else to buy. He loves to shop. Oh, shop. Loves Amazon. Right. Loves Amazon. <laughs> Don't make any suggestions. My bank account can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> so was that it for the announcement? Um, I think so. Yeah. That's it for the announcements. We have a few more questions. Oh, Terry is on. Hey, girly. Terry's my coworker, y'all. I love Terry. <laughs> and um, another good question, Tammy, Tammy King. She is one of my um, one of my high school classmates, y'all. She says, where, how do we decide where we're gonna go? So Recommendations. Recommendations. We do some homework, but a lot of times when we're out, we uh, if we strike up a conversation with our uh, camping neighbors, we'll ask, hey, you got any places that you think are awesome that are worthwhile to see? Um, and if we haven't been, we'll put it on a list, do a little homework on it, and then go. There have been some other places where we've looked at on uh, Yelp, and, uh, not Yelp, but uh, some recommendations on like uh, state parks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we like privacy, um, and we're more into I guess, open spaces. Open spaces, right? So that that's a big thing for us. Um, we're not really liking. We don't like campgrounds where people are on top of each other. Yeah. Um, Aggie Pride. I just saw that comment. Sorry. And we have one other question about whether or not what we take out for protection, um, and it's not necessarily that we feel threatened by anything. Um, we have went to a few places where there were some bears and so we take a a cig, um, pepper spray uh, for bears and And if we don't have anything we use a pan and a machete (laughs) First camping trip, glamping trip I did not have any kind of protection and I had a skillet and a spatula and I was banging on that boy because it was a bear, it was a yeti it was a yeti y'all but uh, it was something that was, was, was a bear. <laughs> it was something. Right. And that was when we came back and decided that we needed to um, take some type of firearm and also um, to take some other things that were didn't have to kill it. Because yeah. I don't want to have to kill an animal if I don't have to. So to answer the question, sometimes we take firearms with us. We both have concealed carry license. I am not in charge of security. So if you ever go camping with me, I'm just going I'm just going to die if a person comes and attacks me, if a bear comes and attacks me, I'm gonna be ready cuz I can't defend anybody. I this guy and when I go with Teresa, they are in charge of security. Yeah. Okay, so a few people have ordered shirts. Great you guys. Yeah. So, um let's see. <laughs> what have you tried Mike Mile High Campground Mike High Campground Camping Dad asked whether or not we've been to Mile High Campground in North Carolina we haven't No, I have to get that one Yeah, we'll check it out we'll look at it and see where it is and some of this stuff is like where is it located and whether or not we would consider that for like a, 
a weekend trip or a three day or four day kind of trip. Um, we wanted to do another beach camping trip, um, but Portsmouth Island uh, is about eight hours from here. So that's a lot of planning that has to go into that kind of trip. Um. Oh, wow, that's so cool. The song is being sucked into the comments. The comments, yes. <laughs> Tammy's son is into he, he's interested in camping camping. We just happen to be live. So Tammy, call me. Well, you don't have my phone number, <laughs> but <laughs> hit me up on Facebook or Instagram and we can talk. Um so oh that's another good thing about our website. That's Tamara. Go ahead. That's Tamara. Tamara King? Yeah, Tammy. Oh, okay. Oh, hey. Yeah, right, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so on our website, there's a section, um, contact Sonia Staples and Tents. I was about to say Sonia Nakota, but yeah, it comes to us. Okay. Um, if you have a question, a lot of times we try as hard as we can to answer all of our questions from Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. But if you have a specific question on the contact us page, it'll send us an email and I'm so much better about checking my email and responding than um, going through these text messages. So um, hit us up on our website. Yeah. Um, Ira is asking, what was the process that we used for choosing Frank? Um, and what did we do to make sure that we didn't get a bad truck? Um, That's all him. Yeah, I'm, I have been, I was blessed to be raised around a bunch of car mechanics. And it, um, so as far as like being able to um, check it out mechanically, I was pretty good at doing that. Um, the process that we used in choosing the Land Cruiser was one of almost an elimination. When we first started, Sonia was like, she gave me a $6,000 budget and I had to use like my travel money from a job on trips. So I was saving up and then um, I cashed in a little bit of stock. So it me like that. So why are you throwing me under the bus, y'all? <laughs> she, she was not filling a third vehicle. It wasn't a camping vehicle. She just wasn't filling a third vehicle because we didn't have anywhere to park. We don't have anywhere to park it. And Nakota walks to work and I travel. Right. But at the time, um, that was really what was going on. So I started out trying to find something that was cheap, that had four wheel drive and um, um, was easy to work on. So it started ruling out, like, I think I wanted a Range Rover, then a Land Rover, then it was a Forerunner, and then Land Cruiser sort of popped in. Because when I was looking for Forerunners, I started going to forums. Um, I Hate Mud is a terrific forum for uh, all things Toyota. Um, if you're interested in the Jeep family, um, there's a, I forgot, <sighs> these guys, the Jeep guys, if you, if you could chime in as far as like, what's a good forum uh, for doing homework on Jeeps. Um, Slee.com has a great um, kind of checklist that you should use in choosing a four wheel drive, not a four wheel drive vehicle per se, but the type of things that you should check for on any four wheel drive vehicle that you're interested in buying. So um, those were, I did a lot of homework. That's, that's really to say the least. And we were about to buy probably not the best Land Cruiser um, when Frank fell in our lap, um, but it worked out. And when I took it to um, ACC to have them do a once over, uh, they came back and said that the truck was in immaculate condition mm -hmm. and um, just to take my time with it and you know build it out after I got used to it. So even after you buy one, um, I think that there should be some time that you just spend with it yeah. to learn what its true capabilities are so that when you do modifications to it, you have a better understanding of why you're modifying it. Yeah, Art just um, said, he made a great statement, every Land Cruiser owner feels this way. The FZJ80 Land Cruiser is the most capable, affordable, off-road vehicle that can carry a load and go anywhere you want. And bring it back. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, but we broke a Land Cruiser and that video is coming up. So here's what we're going to be doing. Um, the type of videos that you can expect for us coming forward. Um, one, we're going to try to release a video once a week. Um, and we're going to start transitioning towards a lot of reviews. Yeah, more gear reviews. Yeah, just, and 
to give you a lot more insight into our camp setup or our glamp setup, and then what we're going to be changing out of that setup and why we think that it might be something for you to consider uh, as you grow your gear as well. Um, we're also going to be doing destination reviews so that you know a little bit more about some of the places that we're choosing and why. And also, um, we're going to do a little bit more about the type of food that we're taking uh, to give that true glamp experience. And I think Sonya's going to be doing some more glamp decorating, um, <laughs> decorating on the budget, uh, things that you can do that's not a big headache to give you more of an upscale feel when you're out glamping. Yeah. And speaking of food, somebody asked about good camping recipes a while ago. Um, I think it was Kashana. Lobster. <laughs> it's any easy. type of seafood, any type of seafood cooked over open fire is amazing. <laughs> it's so good. Right. So my go-to in the house as well as on a camping trip is a good protein, whether it be chicken, shrimp, lobster, you know, fish, whatever, and vegetables. Um, I think starches are a little harder to make over a campfire, but vegetables and just keep it simple. Um, chili is really good because it warms up easy, like homemade chili, not like a canned chili. But um, yeah. Yeah. Somebody's asked, what's the favorite place we've been so far? Course with Island. It's so hard. It's so hard. So let me give you guys um, a little backstory. I went with Teresa, a.k.a. Glamp Queen, to Portsmouth Island in 2016. I came back home and said, this was the best vacation I've ever had. And this one here gets offended. And he's like, what? We were taking some nice vacations. What do you mean it's the best vacation you've ever had? I was like, yeah, the sand, the bugs, like, what do you call those things? Mosquitoes and flies whooped our butts. But it was so good. Like, just the concept of being on an abandoned island, taking everything you need with you, and being 100% self-sustaining was amazing. It was so quiet. It was so serene. You wake up and go to sleep to the sound of the ocean. Yeah. Um, so that's probably been... My favorite, second favorite would be, you know, when we went out west, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's, it's hard for me to top um, Tim Point um, and the Grand Canyon in general. It, it was, I mean, there, there, was, there was the first time I've ever cried uh, from seeing the beauty of a scene um, of, of a landscape uh, when we were approaching Horseshoe Bend. Um, you sort of came up over this hill, and as you crested back down, mm -hmm. it, 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 there was, it was nothing to be said. It was so awing in the true sense of the word uh, to look out over that landscape and just behold this kind of unreal beauty. I mean, it looked like it was made up, like it was some kind of dreamscape or something. It was weird. Yeah. So I really enjoy being out west, and we didn't even scratch the surface of all of the places that we could have gone and wanted to go. So for me, um, at some point, I would love to even live out there for a few years to try to squeeze in as many places as I could while I'm out there. Yeah. Um, the spice combo that we use when we're camping, that is my brother-in-law's secret recipe. Tahisha, my sister, she is online and we are trying to market it. We might be selling it on our website soon <laughs> if he allows me. What is it? Stays Magic Dust. Stays Magic Dust. Woo! But <laughs> That's, look, that is an easy spice to use when we're out. Um, you it, put it on everything. Yeah, it, it's, it's funny. It's a seasoning salt. It's basically what it is, but it is, it is so, so much more. Good. Yeah, it is so It's good. so much more than a seasoning yeah. salt. Yeah, it's got this good um, citrus taste to it, a little bit of sweetness. Oh, it's good. It's good, y'all. Oh. Was the tour worth $240? We didn't pay $240. If you guys don't know what he's talking about, the tour to Horseshoe Bend and the Slot Canyons, Nakota was trying to get me and get me to pay $240. I am so frugal. We did not pay $240. Was it worth the experience? Oh, yes. That. Yes. 
So I'm sorry. Going out to Slot Canyons and Horseshoe Bend was there is nothing short of amazing. And this was um, the Navajo and their their native language. Um, they prefer to be called the Denai, and it means the people. And they were so incredibly informative, so welcoming while we were out there. And we didn't get to see the entire experience because we were being sort of rushed through. Um, they were trying to get us to see as much of it as they possibly could. So we got to go back. And they also do off-road tours um, on other parts of their land. Um, and you get to go to villages uh, to see you know, how they live in a day-to-day -day life kind of thing. So, um, <laughs> wow, that's a heavy pour. I thought it was, <laughs> sorry. We're gonna be real good, y'all. <laughs> So in any event, um, if you are out west and you get a chance to go do the horseshoe being tour, uh, reach out to them. They they are really good people, um, and you can learn a lot more than if you just came up and did the public tour um, on the federal side. Yeah, and you really get to um, experience it for what it's worth. It's not crowded. Like literally the day we went, someone fell in because it was so crowded and they were trying to take their picture. Um, but you don't you don't have any of those crowds to deal with. So with that being said, not risking my life. Um, yes, it's worth two hundred and forty dollars. Yeah. So we have been going for an hour. About an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just so you all again know that we got the website going. Um, oh, yeah. Let's recap the announcements. Because a couple people did say they missed it. Oh, yeah. So we got the website going. That's staplesintense.com for everybody new that might have joined. Staples, I-N-T-E-N-T-S.com. We're going to be out at Expo, I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, Overland East, which is in Asheville in about two weeks. Uh, we're going to be hanging out with uh, Gamp, I mean, excuse me, Glamp Queen, uh, Tri Call Camp. And um, Pull Together. Pull Together, if he Corey makes it Webb. Out. Corey Webb is going to be out there. So, yeah. yeah, and then my family's coming, so I'm looking forward to being able to put a lot of people that um, I enjoy spending time with, or that we enjoy spending time with. Um, we also, we got the t-shirts. Again, there's only 100 of them. Those are going to be the only 100 of that colorway. Um, we're working on um, at least um, partnering with a um, brewing company. We'll see yeah. how that goes. Um, so hopefully we have another major announcement to make with that. Um, Going Gear is a place that we like. Uh, we're working with them and uh, trying to set up some collaborative work um, or some collaborative gear that we can uh, feature and show it, share with you all. So uh, what else we got coming? So um, two major announcements. The website, go on it, see more insight into who we are as a couple. Purchase you some Staples Intense gear or purchase you a gazelle tent. Um, we partnered with Gazelle and we're now carrying their tents on our website. We love their products so much that um, we thought that that was a good fit for us. So those are the two big things. If you have any more questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to us on our website. Um, make sure you comment, subscribe, like, tell your friends. Yeah, share, um, share the posts with um, your networks. You never know who might be out there who's interested and you didn't know. And it might be a good way for you to connect with them, connect with us, and we can continue to grow the channel. Yeah. And also um, leave us recommendations and continue to comment. We really do try to respond to everybody um, as much as as often as we can. We I don't think we've missed anybody yet. So stay out there, stay loving us. Uh, we love you all. Uh, tree True Bass! You guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Have a good night. Thank you guys for tuning in. I was really worried, and I know Nakota, he just said we were out, but I was really worried that no one would join. And yeah, you guys really made me happy tonight. I was nervous. That Thanks, God. we wouldn't be able to see you guys, or you guys wouldn't be able to see us. But everything worked. We worked together. Um, you guys were patient with us, and we really do appreciate it. We appreciate you guys. Oh, we got new camp. We got a new camera. Um, 
and we got microphones, so and we improved the sound as well. So the video should be improving on that too. Just wanted to let y'all know. We heard you. Yeah, and y'all have been really patient with us because our sound and these shaky hands have sucked. But bye, y'all. Bye, you guys. Tree Troopers! You see it? the big end button is at the bottom? No. <laughs> <laughs>